Hi, my name is Robert Whaley. Syracuse, New York. I was born and raised on a street called Bellevue Avenue. I looked it up. In French, Belle means beautiful. Beautiful view. Of course the house was facing it. A cemetery. And a strip mall. And a toxic waste dump. The ugliest thing of all was the neighbors. I spent most of my time there reading, constantly with my nose in a book. The happiest day of my life was when I got a library card. And from an early age, I started writing things down, too. You know, my exploits, my fantasies, my crimes. Mainly shoplifting and garden variety arson. I probably shouldn't have written all that down. Note to self, always destroy the evidence. You don't want to leave a paper trail. You see, my father found all those words and beat me into the middle of next Sunday, to use his words. I learned a lot about human survival just by watching my mom try to keep the house together. Her husband was a hard-drinking, compulsive gambler. A gambler. When I first heard that word, I saw river boats in the Old West. I learned instead to see cheap bookie parlors, parlay sheets, and countless $10 bets with next week's grocery money. Oh yeah, oh yeah. For so many years, my mom fought and fought and fought. And I always wondered, what crazy coincidence, what supernatural force, what bizarre astrological alignment could possibly have brought my parents together. When I was a kid, everyone on my block was married. Then, one morning, right out of, out of the clear blue sky, they all got divorced. It was almost as if all the fathers, in unison, formed some mass exodus off that street, looking, searching. Searching for what? Whatever my father was looking for, he lost it in the bottom of a bottle. And when your mind is lost in an alcoholic haze, anything and everything can just disappear, including an entire family. But if I think hard enough about it, I can almost remember them happy. Ah, well, I don't want to be too hard on the old man. He wasn't all bad, I guess. He played semi-pro baseball, if you can imagine such a thing. Shortstop. And he played hard. When I was little, he used to take me to those games. Read to me. Remember my birthday. That's how I prefer to think of him. He also disappeared one day. And then, years of silence. We got a call that he was in the charity ward of St. Mary's Hospital over on the north side dying of liver failure. We all knew what that meant. I tried to say goodbye. I really did. But I got there too late. His spirit had already staggered out and left the room. For better or for worse, I guess it would never be all that far from me. <laughs> I knew I had to get out of that town. Go someplace else. Someplace big and exciting. See what I could do with my life. So of course I ended up in New York. Of course. <laughs> I was living in a sumptuous palace on Rivington Street, down on the Lower East Side. It was like something out of the migrant camp in the Grapes of Wrath. There were no walls around the toilet. No. Just sat there on a little three-foot platform, the naked toilet. Every time you sat down to take a dump, it was performance art. My mother still can't accept the fact that with my advanced criminal mind, I didn't become a lawyer. She's always saying, you're so ass backwards. You're the wrong way up. You know that, kid? You are the wrong way up. I thought about that. Wrong way up, what does that mean? What does it mean for me? Well, it means for me, finding your own way in life. No matter how hard that might be, no matter how wrong that might look to others, I don't always land on my feet, the right side up, if you will.
but I do always try to keep looking up. And in those moments, when I'm out in some dive bar, and my hand is on some girl's hip, and the band is cranking out louder than thunder, and there's a hundred people dancing in a room meant for 20, and that this, the sweat is dripping down the walls, and I'm slipping in a pile of somebody's puke, and f fights are breaking out, and the energy is going back and forth, back and forth, higher and higher and higher. In those moments, I wonder, have I found happiness?